Hey, welcome back to another video. We've had the four-wheel camper on the truck for a couple months now, done a few trips, and I've kind of got an idea of what kind of solar power I want to put on the roof. We had solar on the last camper. We had 200 watts going into a small Goal Zero. We're going to bump that up to a 400-watt Renogy solar system into a uh, larger 3000 Goal Zero. I've got all the product here. It just came in, all the wiring, all the tools. This video is going to cover install of the solar and unpackaging it all, so let's jump into that. So a big debate is whether going with solid panels or going with the thin flexible panels. Uh, I thought about this for quite a while and my reasons for going with the solid panels were this. I could get a bigger panel for a cheaper price. It's a smaller footprint. These are 27 and a half by 59 inches. They're 200 watts a piece. They're about 20 pounds a piece. With the thin ones, yes, they're very light, but they were much more expensive. You had to have a bigger footprint to get the same amount of output and I was still gonna have to build a frame structure underneath them for my setup and, and the way I wanted to do it with the track system up top. I didn't wanna double stick them to the roof of my camper. They'd be great if that's what you were gonna do because then there is no frame system weight to add into it. But I figured by the time I bought a thin one and added the framing to it, it was not gonna be much weight difference than these solid ones. These are gonna be real simple to mount to the track system up top. And again, smaller footprint and smaller price point with more watts. So the four-wheel camper comes pre-wired with SAE plugs in the roof and then a stub out of wire in the bed of the truck. The panel comes with MC4 connectors on the back of the panel. So my plan is use these two Y connectors to go from both panels and the existing MC4 ends and then use this MC4 end to connect to the MC4 to SAE adapter and then I'm gonna use this little 90 SAE to go into the roof of the camper. I'll show all that once it's connected so it makes better sense. And then on the inside of the truck where the wire stubs out, I'm gonna put a SAE end on that and then just some Goal Zero uh, adapters and wires to get into the Goal Zero and I'll show you those. I'm gonna connect the two panels together to make one large panel basically using this one inch by one inch aluminum C-channel uh, I'm going to be inserting some riv nuts into the side of the panel using this riv nut tool. And then I'm going to be attaching this whole big panel that I'm basically making with these L brackets to the track that's in the roof of the camper. So I just laid out some lines on the back of the panels here for my roof track width. Uh, double check yours, it might be different, and then if you're not doing this on a four-wheel camper, it's definitely going to be different. But mine's 52 and 5 eighths wide is the center of my tracks. The panel is 58 and 3 quarters. So I'm in about 3 inches and a 16th from the end of the panel where my tracks are going to go. So now I'm going to start drilling some holes. That way I can attach these L brackets to the panel. Something I didn't realize that the frame around the solar panel that's aluminum is actually a double wall. So a riv nut is really meant for a single surface to pinch on. So I'm going to just drill the holes out to use a bolt and a nut instead of the riv nut. It might be a little bit trickier getting my hand in here to, to do that instead of having the riv nut just mounted in it. But I think it's going to be the better choice now that I know this is a double wall. And then something I like to do is I take one of these step bits and I just barely touch the edge of the fresh hole and it kind of chamfers the edge and cleans up all the aluminum burrs on the edge and it makes it nice for the bolt. Since the tracks up in the top of the four-wheel camper are six millimeter T-nuts, we're gonna stick with six millimeter bolts on this whole project, which is a 10 millimeter socket. Since these are gonna be rattling around up on the roof, I'm gonna put a little bit of blue Loctite on the uh, bolts. This is where the riv nut would have been nice. I could have just bolted it right in, but now I'll just have to use the nut from the backside. So I changed my design a little bit off camera because I was short on space for the roof fan. So this little piece that I was making, uh, I abandoned that. 
and I just went back to regular uh, L brackets, but the front L bracket, I put a rib nut in it, and I have a video clip of that. So what I ended up having to do here on the front edge is this L bracket put a rib nut in it, and I'm gonna bolt the panel from this side. So I'm putting the panel over the top of the L bracket and bolting through it. It'll make sense in a minute. But the rest of them are standard L brackets, no rib nuts, just bolt them together. So it's pretty simple other than that very front one. So now I'm ready to get the wiring hooked up and connect my um, Y pieces so it pairs it down into one. So we'll do that one from that panel, one from this panel, and then grab the other Y. That one from that panel, that one to that panel. So now I've got both panels down to just a positive and a negative. And then I'm gonna take this one, connect it, connect that end, and now that brings it down to an SAE plug. And I can go SAE, into the 90 that's in the roof of the camper. All right, got the wires all organized underneath the panels. So once I get both up there, all I'm gonna have to do is connect these two to these two and that'll be it and then screw the panels down. But as far as wiring, it's all secured. As long as I laid it out how I think will fit, we should be good. Let's throw them up there. All right, I've got the second panel up here. Here's that 90 degree SAE plug into the roof. There's that 90, and then I just need to connect these two MC4 connectors to the other panel. Connecting the front panel to the rear panel. All right, final fit, they all are in. My dilemma with that first piece was the panel was getting too close to the hatch opening on the fan. Uh, I forgot to account for it kind of rotating backwards, so I needed some clearance there. So that's why I ended up having to put the L bracket under the panel using a riv nut on the L bracket and then putting a longer bolt through the front of the panel into the riv nut. So hopefully that part makes sense. Uh, and then two standard brackets here, and then two standard brackets in the back. So pretty simple. This is the only wire you see connecting this panel to this panel. And then the provided four wheel camper plug is underneath this panel. And that 90 degree fits under there just fine. So now I'm gonna go through and tighten all these 10 millimeters into the track, and we're done. 400 watts, ready to go. All right, it's been a couple days. I was waiting for some heavy duty 12 gauge wire to show up and some Anderson plugs. Like I mentioned on the top side of the camper, that's all SAE plugs coming down into here from four wheel campers already wired. So I added a Anderson plug to the end. I was a little skeptical if this was gonna work because I had Renogy and Goal Zero paired up on my last camper and I had to reverse the polarity, surprisingly, to get it to work. Um, so I did some testing with a new multimeter I got. So on this one, again, I had to put the red wire into the black port and the black wire into the red port of my goal zero. Make sure that's right for yours, double check it before you do any of that, please. Um, but for my setup, that's what I'm needing to do. So I'm gonna do some changing with the wiring. Uh, I'm gonna make a extension piece out of this spool and eventually put the goal zero way up in the corner. But for now, I've got it set up just with this lead right out of the four-wheel camper wiring. It's late in the day. It's 
5 30 6 o'clock so the sun's way at an angle so i'm probably not going to get much out of my panels i'm getting anywhere from low 100s up to like 140 right now uh, i wouldn't expect anything else with the sun the way it is so i'm gonna redo some of this wiring clean it up a little make the extender piece and then i also found this on amazon it's uh, anderson to 12 volt so this is what's going to run my fridge and just plug the 12 volt plug into here one of the ways I double checked that my solar wiring was correct and that the plugs were all done up top correctly was using the multimeter here and comparing it to the expected panel output from Renogy. And there's anywhere from 21 to 23 volts expected out of these panels. And I'm getting 21.65 right now, late in the day. I saw earlier when I tried it up in the 22s. So these things are putting out exactly what we want. All right, I'm pretty much wrapped up with this stage of the installation. I've got the wires all cleaned up here, extended around behind me to the front of the truck and over to the goal zero. While I was doing this other electrical work, I just added on one small project. The rinse kit has an internal battery, which I've been using for months, but it comes from the factory with a little pigtail underneath that you can hardwire. So I just added some 12 volt power to it. Now I never have to worry about charging it or bring in the power cord with me or anything. It's just hardwired that's ready to go. So like I mentioned, I've got the four wheel camper wire running behind me, extended into the Toyota track, down through the opening in the back of the goal zero, extra wire into the lid, and my solar is now powered to the front of the goal zero. So that's all concealed under there. This 12 volt plug here goes back up to the front corner of the camper, which powers the lights and the roof fan. And then this internal Anderson plug on the goal zero is coming out into the bed of the truck, exiting the bed of the truck into the cab and powering my Dometic fridge. So this is going to be the central hub for all my power coming in and going out on my eventual build out. When I build this all out, I'm going to have a power supply coming up to the front of the build out from the goal zero. Well, that's going to wrap up this solar panel electrical and goal zero video. Here's a quick clip of the roof, how the panels ended up looking in their final mounting locations. I'm going to leave some information in the description of this video with links of the products we used, but feel free to reach out in the comments or on Instagram if you have any questions about it. There's going to be some more videos coming. A roof rack just arrived, so that'll be an install video as well. Um, so thanks for checking it out and we'll catch you on the next one.